Hello, hello, it's Matt the Fanatic here. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, translating a function. We might as well just get started, and if there are any questions, you know where to leave them down below. Um, so when you're shifting and reflecting and doing all that, there are a couple of things that you want to remember. I think the most important thing that you want to think about uh, is the fact that f of x is equal to y. You always want to keep that in mind. Uh, and if you keep that in mind, it will make doing these reflections a heck of a lot easier. All right? And so when I say y, I mean that's my y coordinate when I put something into the function. You give it some input, output is the y. So the end result, the f of x, the f of negative 2, the f of 4, whatever it might be, the end result is your y coordinate or your output, right? Your element of your range. So now we're looking up here. Um, at these four example translations, and I'm not going to go in order. Um, there are a couple of things I want to take a look at first. We'll look at number two here first. It says half of f of x. So if f of x equals y, this is essentially saying half of your y. That is half of your y coordinate. So here is a given function that is apparently represented by f of x. It's a relation connected by segments or I guess these points that are connected by segments. And uh, for these given points, if we just move these, since they're just segments, the segments will move with them. I'll just keep the dots connected. So if it's half of f of x, or half of my y, I go to my coordinates, and all I need to do then is take half of that y value. So for half of, neg half of 4, that would be 2. My x coordinate does not change. Notice it says half of f of x. So the input did not have any shifting or reflecting, any translations of any kind going on with it, just the output. It's half of f of x. So negative 2 stays the same, but I take half of my y. So half of 4 would be 2. That would put me at negative 2, comma 2. So that point would be translated about right there. And then I'm at 0, comma 3. Same thing here, half of 3 is 1 and 5 tenths. I'm still at 0. That puts me halfway to the x-axis. That point would be there. Half of 0 is still 0, so this point actually is not going to move anywhere. And then half of negative 1 is negative 5 tenths, so this moves halfway to the x-axis as well. So there are where the points are going to move, and I end up connecting those dots. Now you can't go wrong with orange. It's always a good color. So we'll stick with orange and we'll connect those dots right up. And there is our translated function. It's about half the size vertically as the original function. I'm going to go ahead and erase that now. And we'll take a look at another one. So this one right here is one uh, where I'm going to have an actual x translation first. And the shortcuts for these are um, given in class usually. And if you're talking about just arithmetic translations, the translations that are done on x move you left and right. And the ones that are done on y or your f of x, they're outside the parentheses, those move you up and down or vertically. So uh, remembering which direction is really strange because it's not how you would expect it. When you see minus, you think. Uh, going in the negative direction. And in fact, for the y's, this does mean to go down one unit. But for the x's, it's different. It, this one actually means go to the right one. And I always sort of imagine the minus sign as being an arrow pointing to the direction you're supposed to go or that number. So this is like saying x, move it to one to the right because one is over on the right. I don't know. However, you can remember it, you know. But, um,. So it's opposite for horizontal and just how you think it would be vertically. All right, so let's keep that in mind. But again, all we're going to do is start with the original point. And we are going to move it according to those translations. So uh, we're always going to start within the function first. You always do the stuff outside the parentheses last. So we'll start by moving the x to the, to the right one unit first, and then the y will go down one unit. So I start at this point. I go to the right one, and then I go down one, and this is where D moves. Now I go to this point, I go to the right one, I go down one. This is where C moves. I go to this point, I go to the right one, down one, 
there's where B moves, and then I take A to the right one, down one, and that's where that one moves. So that one is a uh, purely a congruent transformation. The original function didn't change at all. It still looks exactly the same. The whole thing just moved to the right one and down one, but you can see that all the segments are still the same length, nothing shrunk, um, and nothing stretched. All right, uh, I should probably keep track of the ones that we're doing here. Let's see, we uh, we did this one first, and we just did number one. All right, and so for the other ones, um, when you have a negative sign on the X, what that does is it, um, it flips the function horizontally across the Y axis. So everything is going to move across the Y axis. So F of negative X, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect, this is a reflection, across the about the Y axis. I'm going to reflect every point across the Y axis. If it's, a, if it's on the left, I go, I'm going to go on the right. If it's on the right, it's going to end up going to the left, and it has to be the same distance away that it was first. And then we see that we've got a number out here. It's positive. That means I'm taking F, my F function, and I'm adding 1 to the Y value. So I'm going to go ahead and do those in order. Again, you start from the inside of the parentheses and work your way out. So I'm going to take this D and uh, I need to reflect it across the Y because that says negative X. So I reflect it across, it goes over here, and then I add one to the Y value. So then I go up. Over here, reflecting it across just keeps it right where it is, but I still need to go up one. And then down here, B, reflecting across moves me over here. I go up one. And then the A, reflecting it, it's three units away right now, so it needs to be three units away over here. And then I go up one to there. Probably shouldn't have made that mark down there. But you get the idea, right? And then we can connect those points. So um, again, no stretching or shrinking. It was a congruent transformation, just a reflection about the y-axis, and then the whole thing moved up one. And now we can mark this one off, and so then we have one more to go. Uh, this one includes um, a horizontal translation, because it's inside the parentheses. Can you guess which way this is going to be? gonna be the left yeah yeah I'm sure that that's what you said of course because you're following along diligently that's gonna be the left right doesn't make sense if it's inside positive means go to the left and then we're gonna take that Y value and we're gonna multiply it by 2 so we start here this one again again you can start wherever you want so I'm gonna move it to the left one there we go and then multiply that Y value by 2 that would put me at 8 and I really don't have much room so I'm just gonna make that point all the way up there it's about four units up over here, I go to the left one, multiply that Y value by two. So my Y value is three there, that times two gives me six. Uh, come down here to B. Oh, I must have deleted those coordinates on accident. That's all right, you know what they are. I move it to the left one again, multiply that Y value by two. That Y value is zero, so it's just gonna stay put there. It doesn't move anywhere. And then I take this one, and I move it to the left one and remember you're multiplying the Y value by 2 and my Y value at this point or where it was originally was negative 1 so I take negative 1 you multiply that by 2 it gives you negative 2 so that's gonna move me here so you see we doubled our distance from the x-axis that's essentially what's going on and so we'll end up with a function that looks similar to what we had before but it has been stretched out and uh, moved um, in one direction and it looks like I need to move some there we go because I couldn't see that one all the way up at the top so it's been stretched way way out and moved to the left one alright and so that's uh, shrinking and reflections for this example you can imagine that things are going to be similar in other examples. Remember, if it's inside the parentheses, that's a horizontal translation, and the signs don't make sense. So if it says positive, you go to the negative direction. That is to the left. And if it's negative, you go to the positive direction. That's to the right. And if it's outside the parentheses, addition or subtraction, that's a vertical translation, up or down, and that does make sense. And if you're multiplying by f of x, that means you're multiplying the y value. You just need to find out whatever that y value is, wherever you're at, and multiply it by whatever that value is up there. So sometimes it'll be negative and sometimes it'll be positive and you move accordingly. Again, if you have any questions, leave them below. Math of Fanatic, I'm out.